Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know when you're watching this episode, but hello. Welcome back to the Brittany Smith Podcast. I am your host, Brittany N. Smith, and I am so excited that you decide to sit with me today. Um, we're friends now, so you're stuck with me. If you're new to my space, I'm Brittany N. Smith. Again, I am a brand strategist, brand designer, your brand bestie, but I'm also a real one. Okay, I'm a mama, I'm a wife, I'm an elder in my local church, I love people, I love God. Hello, we are now acquainted. If you're not new here, welcome back, girl. Welcome back. We're going to talk about something today that we all need to hear. When I was putting together these notes, I'm like, yo, I need to hear this too. So you best believe I'm going to be going back and listening to this episode again and again for myself. Um, and so You've heard me say um, to take out your Britney Smith notebook and get ready to take some notes. Well, guys, we actually have Britney Smith notebooks. I'm so excited. So I just want to show you guys. We've got notebooks here. The Britney Smith podcast. Notebooks. Notebooks. Uh-huh. 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 Yes. Yes. Uh. Yes, 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 yes. So you can actually order yourself a Britney Smith podcast notebook, okay? And you can take your notes right there, girlfriend. All right? So make sure you head on over to BritneySmithCreative.com slash shop, and they're right at the top of the page. Get yours today. Now, now that that's over, the title of this episode, the title of this episode is If Not Now, When? If not now, when? How to talk yourself into it when life is lifing, okay? Maybe you've never heard the term life is lifing. We say it in my circle, life be lifing, like it's never lifed before. And all that means is that things are happening up, down, left, right, situations that arise that are out of your control that you have to pop up, put fires out. Um, it's just one thing after the next. Life continues to life, whether you want it to or not, right? Um, you know, for example, if you're like, yeah, I want to go back to school, but man, all these things keep happening in my life. There's never going to be a right time to go. You're just going to have to go do it, right? So that's what we mean by life is life in, um, where there's just something going on in every area of your life and you're looking for an opportunity to just pause and breathe and whew, regain your bearings, right? So that's what we mean when we say life be life in. Um, and so again, this episode is about how to talk yourself into it. What is it? What is it for you? It could be your pursuing your business. It could be pursuing your next level of education. It could be starting your health journey. It could be preparing yourself for that next relationship. It could be preparing to be a better mom, right? Like whatever the things that you desire to do, the things that are on your heart to do for yourself, your dreams, your vision, your goals, that is your it how to talk yourself into it. One thing I know I don't have to teach y'all how to do is how to talk yourself out of it, okay? You've got talking yourself out of the things on lock. You'll get an idea and you'll be like, yo, this is a great idea. And then by the time you lift your hand to go do the thing, you've already talked yourself out of it. You've talked your, talk yourself um, down from pursuing it because you've already convinced yourself that it's not going to work. You've already convinced yourself that no one will be interested. You've already convinced yourself that you're not smart enough. You've already convinced yourself that you don't have the resources. You've already convinced yourself that you don't have enough support. You've already convinced yourself that it just won't work. So you're a professional. We are professionals at talking ourselves out of it. But I want to help you in this episode to uh, reframe, reframe your mind and learn how to practice talking yourself into it, right? So instead of saying, oh man, I don't have the right resources, you're going to say, what resources do I have already? that can help me accomplish this goal. Instead of saying, I'm not smart enough to accomplish this thing, say, how can I, what can I learn? How can I access the information that I need to get this thing done, right? So that is, that's how we're gonna start to reframe things and talking ourselves into doing the thing instead of talking ourselves out of doing the thing, all right? So there's a couple things 
These are, these are the things that you're going to write down. These are the things that you're going to take notes. And so the first thing is we have to understand limiting beliefs and the impact that they have. Limiting beliefs come from either things that people have said or things that you have experienced that have formulated an opinion about you in your own mind or about your situation in your own mind. And they've also come just from internal mutterings, internal, um, as you perceive yourself and perceive the world around you, sometimes if our lenses are not correct, we will form opinions about ourselves and about the things around us that are not accurate, right? And so then those, those ideas become beliefs and our beliefs inform our thoughts and our thoughts inform our actions. And so if we can, if we, cause we can't always help the ideas that come to mind, but what we can do is take control over what we choose to believe. Mm, 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 I'm blessing myself already. All right. So um, there are our beliefs that we have formed and adopted that limit us from taking action. They limit us from um, saying yes to certain opportunities. They limit us in terms of how big we can dream. Limiting beliefs do just that. They limit us from the things that we're able to do. And so I need you to understand that those things impact the decisions you make. They impact the life that you're living right now. The life that you're living has been built on your beliefs. The life that you're living right now has been built on your beliefs. Beliefs. Your life looks like what you believe you can have. Girl, your family looks like what you believe they ought to look like. Your marriage looks like the potential you believe it has. Ah, man, this is good. So I want you to understand and begin to identify what beliefs you have that may be limiting you from your next. I know for me, oftentimes it is, I'm not good enough for that. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the, the secret sauce that they have. I don't belong in those circles. Who am I to do X, Y, and Z? Those are my limiting beliefs. And so what has to happen is we have to challenge those limiting beliefs with number two, embracing a growth mindset. Embracing a growth mindset. And all that means, you, you guys, is that my mindset says that where I am is not definite. That there's more. That I can learn how to do the things. I can experience something new and grow from it, that I can make myself open to the different opportunities and take those risks because I'm able to grow. What I know today is not all I'm ever going to know. I can learn whatever it is. I can learn the skill. I could be switching careers, but I can learn the new job. I can learn the new roles. I can learn to uh, handle people differently. I can learn to handle myself differently. I can learn to live a healthier lifestyle. I can change. That's what a growth mindset says. I can change. I welcome change. And so you may have a growth mindset in some areas, but we all have some growing to do um, as far as our mindset is concerned in other areas of our lives, right? So that's number two, embracing a growth mindset. You have to understand your limiting beliefs, identify them. I want you to take time and write down the negative self-talk that takes place in your mind on a regular basis. I want you to write them down. Some of them you'll notice, some of them you won't, but I want you to write down the ones that you know about. Um, and then I want you to apply a growth mindset to each of those things, right? So for example, if your limiting belief is I'm not smart enough, then I want you to write down a, a, a contradicting or challenging thought or idea that's gonna challenge that limiting belief. I'm not smart enough to do the thing, but I can learn more about the thing and I can become smart enough, or I can learn more about the thing and then partner with people that do know about the thing to help me with the thing, right? So that's a growth mindset versus the limiting belief, all right? Then number number four, right? Learning from failure. Number three, learning from failure and embracing resilience. Learning from failure and embracing resilience. So guys, 
there is something that is really amazing about the the ability to learn from our mistakes um and practicing identifying the lesson that you can take away from your mistakes um in my last book brand new day 30 days to building your personal brand um one of the days it's a, it's a 30 day reader 30 day devotional one of the days um is titled mistakes are um tools in your toolbox right so i talk about the concept of when you make a mistake the lesson that you learn you put it in your toolbox so that the next time something like that comes up you pull out that lesson and you can maneuver differently right and so you have got to in order for you to continue to talk yourself into it when life is life in is to dig into your toolbox of mistakes think about the last time you uh you turned down an opportunity think about the last time you talked yourself out of it and you realized after the fact that it was really just going to be all right and you should have went through with it anyway right um i want you to think about how um those mistakes are now things that you can build upon so that you can move forward with confidence and with peace in your heart that I've been here before and I've made that mistake before. So now I know what to do. Right. And then the other thing about this is embracing resilience. When has anything ever killed you? Like there are decisions y'all that we make that we're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. If that happens, I'm going to die. If I trip over my words, y'all know how many ums and, and slip ups I've already had in this episode alone. I don't care because I'm human and nobody speaks perfectly all the time. Nobody does anything perfectly all the time. And so resilience says that I might've made a mistake. I might've messed up. I might've tripped over some things, but I'm still here. And I'm going to just take the next opportunity to do better. I'm going to keep trying to do better until I get it all the way right. Resilience is being able to bounce back. Resilience is knowing that that last issue or that last challenge that you feel like you failed at is not the end. So I want you to learn from your failures. They happen for a reason. They teach us things. Learn from your failures and embrace resilience. You are the bounce back queen. Think of all the things in your life that you've experienced that you had to bounce back from. You are not where you were and you do not look like what you've been through. Amen. All right. So then the next thing is cultivating self-love and building confidence. Huh. I want you to talk yourself into it. And one of the reasons that you can do it is because the opportunity has presented itself to you. God is not going to allow us to be exposed to great and mighty and lofty things and not have already equipped us with the ability to get it done or the the ability to make it happen right and so um a part of the reason why we allow ourselves to quit and allow ourselves to back down is because we don't believe in ourselves we don't believe in the gifts that god has given us we don't believe that um like how he is who he says he is we don't believe that we are who he says we are Right. And so we have to cultivate self love in a way that is so strong and so authentic that when challenges arise, you know who you are. I know that when Brittany and Smith puts her mind to something, it's going to get done and it's going to get done in excellence because I know my strengths. I know my superpowers. I know that um, that creativity is, a, is a, a superpower of mine and I can create my own solution. I can create a solution out of any situation, right? Like I know that about myself and it, I didn't always know that y'all. Like don't let, don't let this sound like, oh, just know yourself and just, it's easy. It's not easy. But I, I, I want to encourage you to take the time to get to know you and how amazing you are. I want you to take the time to get to know how your mind works, like being aware of how your mind works, being aware of the things that strengthen you, being aware of the things that fill you up, being aware of your weaknesses, being aware of who you who you work well with, being aware with what skills and what personalities complement yours. Being self-aware will help you create self-love. If I'm aware of it, 
I can love it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm aware of how amazing I am, then I can love myself. And um, I recognize that I am a gift to the people I encounter. And I don't say that braggingly, guys. Um, But what I'm saying is enough people have expressed how much of a blessing I am in their lives. And when I look at the, the list of people that have said that, and I look at the ways that I'm operating in their lives, I'm able to figure out what the theme is. I'm able to figure out that, um, you know, people feel safe around me. People feel because I'm down to earth and I'm just, you know, I'm just me. They feel comfortable enough to be themselves around me. They feel comfortable enough to, um, to express what's in their heart so that I can then be that, that sounding board that's going to speak life into them. I know that that's what's in me. Right. So, um, and I, and I love that about me because I love people and it allows me to see people through some hard times. And that is, that is life for me. Um, so creating self-love and building confidence, you got to know what you're good at. You got to know what your jam is, right? Like you have to know, um, think about the people that call you for stuff and ask you to help them with things all the time. Like you have to understand why they call you. That is your gift. Those are the clues. That is what you're good at. That is what God has gifted you to do and called you to do. That is what um, what you ought to be doing all the time, right? So cultivating self-love and building confidence. You're a queen and it's time to start treating yourself like a queen. Identifying how amazing you are and then putting parameters and boundaries around how you allow people to handle you. Ah, yeah, that is that is hard. Um, that is challenging, but it's necessary. Um, and then, so the next one is, um, taking messy action and creating momentum. Ooh, when I was first introduced to the concept of messy action, um, it was unusual, but by the time I was finished understanding what that meant, it was liberating. It was liberating. If you are a recovering perfectionist, raise your hand. Okay. I'm raise them. I know I'm not by myself. Raise your hand, girl. Okay. So (laughs) for those of us who are recovering perfectionists, we want to wait until something is just right. We want to wait until the air is just right. We want to wait until we have the right amount of money. We want to wait until we have the right outfits. We want to wait until we have the right people around us. We want to wait until everything is perfect for us to move. And so taking messy action is simply not waiting for all the things, but moving with what you have and trusting God that he's going to put the the pieces in place um, to help you get the goal accomplished, right? So I want us to think about that. I want us to think about what kind of action can you take today toward the goal that you have? What kind of action can you take today toward the vision and the dreams that that you have? What kind of steps can you take today? What kind of messy action can you take today? Is it going to be perfect? No. Is it going to look a hot mess in the beginning? Sure. But you have to take messy action so that you can create momentum. Messy action helps with building up to the thing. And so I want you to think about that. What would be your messy action today? What would be your messy action today that you can take toward getting the thing done? And then I want you to seek God. This is the next one. Seek God. Trust some, uh, whew, guys, seek God, seek support and seek accountability. Seek God, seek support, seek accountability. We cannot do this thing alone. We were not created to do this thing alone. And oftentimes we make ourselves into these little islands because we don't trust people, because um, we don't think that there's anybody who can adequately walk alongside of us. Um, We feel like people are too busy and we don't want to be a bother. We don't want people to tell us about ourselves, like all the things we need to seek God, seek support and seek accountability. If you could find yourself one person that can assist you in the journey that you're on, find one. One is better than none. Somebody to hold you accountable um, as you are figuring out how to accomplish the goal. People who are going to hold you accountable that, and, and they can tell when you're talking yourself out of something. 
people who will help you talk yourself back into it, people who won't let you quit, people who see when you're spent and need a vacation or need to take a break. You need that kind of support and accountability. And then lastly, trust God, period. I need you, girlfriend, to trust that God has has created you for a certain purpose. Trust that God has a specific group of people that are assigned to you. They need your story. They need your leadership. They need your mentorship. They need your guidance. They need your love. They need your light. Trust God in who he's made you to be. Trust God in um, the provision that's needed for your vision to come to pass. He's faithful. And he didn't make you by accident. He didn't give you the gifts you have by accident. He didn't anoint you the way he has by accident. He hasn't allowed you to experience the things you've experienced by accident. So you need to trust God. Trust God. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. Um, So let's do a quick recap, right? So number one. So let's do a quick recap. Number one, understand limiting beliefs and their impact. Number two, embracing a growth mindset. Number three, learning from failure and embracing resilience. Number four, creating self-love and building confidence. Number five, taking messy action and creating momentum. Number six, seek God, seek support and seek accountability. And then number seven, the number of perfection. is trust is trust god period trust god period he has created you for a time such as this this season of life this year 2023 this moment that you're in right now he created you for this time and you have to do the things You have to get it done. If not now, when? I don't want you to be 45, 55, 65 talking about, I'm about to start the business that I always wanted to start. No, sis, do it now. Plan it now. Design it now. Talk about it now. Put it out there now. Build a team around it now. Sell the product now. Do the things. Because life is always going to be life. But the question is, will you, as a winner, be winning while life is life in. So listen, this was so good. Don't forget, get your Britney Smith podcast notebooks, Britney Smith podcast notebooks um, on BritneySmithCreative.com slash shop. And um, as I mentioned on the last episode, Life Brand Academy is coming out very soon. We're kicking it off in July of 2023. It's an eight week mentoring program where for the first eight weeks, we're going to talk about the woman behind the brand. So we're going to talk about life. What we're going to talk about being authentic. We're going to talk about identifying your superpower. We're going to um, talk about knowing what value you bring to the table. We're going to talk about balancing the different areas of your life and creating the life that flows with who you are naturally, right? And then on the latter half of the program, y'all, we're going to talk about the work of building your life brand, right? So we're going to talk about branding. We're going to talk about identifying the person you were called to reach. We're going to talk about what your products and services should be according to who you are. It's going to be so, 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 so good. So if you're interested in getting more information, I I want you to send me an email at Brittany Smith podcast, Brittany Smith podcast at gmail.com. Brittany Smith podcast at gmail.com. There's a link in the comments um, that you'll be able to join the wait list and you're going to get some information as we begin to roll it out. Space is going to be limited. So if you want to know all the things about Life Brand Academy, I want you to email me and let me know to put you on the wait list. All right, y'all. Listen, I love you. 
I love you, sis. Like you are amazing. I'm so glad that you're in my space. And if you don't take nothing else away from this episode, you can do this. You can. You can do it. Yes, you can. With the kids, with the husband, with the job, with the business, with the sickness, with the caregiving, with fill in the blank, you can do it. And you have to. It's time. It's time. All right. So I will see you next time on another episode of the Britney Smith podcast. Bye.